Politics Now. Former Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid left Washington two years ago, but he still knows how to stir the pot in politics. This week, the New York Times unleashing an interview with Reid that was laced with some harsh comments about the president. The paper also reported that Reid doesn't have long to live, but is that accurate? George Knapp has some reaction in his Street Talk commentary. Harry Reid is well aware that a mere mention of his name sounds like fingernails on a chalkboard to his legions of political critics, and it's likely he takes some pleasure in that knowledge. Given the state of affairs in Washington these days, it could be said that Reid was ahead of his time in the use of blunt, even wildly inappropriate sound bites, lobbed like atomic grenades at assorted adversaries. The interview he gave to the New York Times was jam packed with Reidisms that have already been widely reported and re reported by newscasters who could barely stifle their chortles. But included in the Times story were two sentences Reed did not expect. These two, quote, Reed, who is 79, does not have long to live. I hate to be so abrupt about this, the journalist wrote, but Reed probably would not mind. In actuality, Reed does mind. After reading the story, I cautiously reached out to the senator to get his reaction. Cheap shot, he texted, then added a Reed like zinger that he, the reporter, will also die. Face it, no one gets out of here alive, so eventually both Reed and the New York Times will be proven correct. Maybe the Mighty Times is so great at reading political tea leaves that it also figures it can use entrails to predict the future. But if the paper knows something about Reed's medical prognosis, maybe it should be shared with the senator's doctors. Back in early May, I was in my car on my way to Reed's Henderson home when I got a call saying our meeting was off because a doctor had spotted something during a routine screening. A week went by without another message. Reed called from Johns Hopkins, where he was about to undergo surgery for pancreatic cancer. He didn't want anyone to know about it, and nothing was reported until the surgery was over. In the months since, Reed has made few, if any, public comments about his health, and people have assumed the worst. Rumors percolated, preparations were made. That's because the numbers are so daunting. 95% of those who get pancreatic cancer die within five years, the majority much sooner than. Than that. But unlike most with that disease, Reed's cancer did not spread outside his pancreas. His doctors told him months ago that he is cancer free. The chemo treatments and drugs have taken a brutal toll on him, and the senator has been re hospitalized twice, but he is improving. When we visited two weeks ago, he told me he would be returning to his office a few times per week because he has things he wants to get done. For Reed bashers, that likely conjures up images of the meddler in chief, the political source sorcerer and puppet master laboring in his dark dungeon beside bubbling cauldrons of mystery liquids as he plots the socialist conquest of Nevada and the world. Harry Reid might even like that scene. The senator will check out for good one of these days, so will the rest of us. But the New York Times doesn't know when that will be. And for now, Reid still has things he wants to do. I'm George Knapp.